Okay. All right, Dad, what's going on? It's a big one. First fish of the morning. He's run a couple of times already. The goal now for the trip is, Dad, to get his lake trout specialist, which is five trophy lake trout over 35 inches. He got three yesterday, which is insane. So if you can get two more, he will be a lake trout specialist in Manitoba. I think this might be another one. Oh, he's right here. Ooh, that's big. Oh, that's big. Barely hooked, Dad. Barely hooked. Just guide him slowly, no big jerks. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's big. Oh, Dad. Wow. That's another like 40 incher. Yes. Another monster for Dad. First fish of the morning. Yeah. And I don't even know what to do anymore. I tried to replicate his tube, but it's, it's catching. Something magical about it. I don't know if this is as big as the one yesterday, but it is monster proportions. Guys, we are getting absolutely spoiled. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, it hurts my wrist to hold. That humpback, snub nose. Yeah. Like, look at that guy. All right, we're gonna throw this guy on the tape. This is number four for dad's master hunt. 40 and a half, yeah. 40 and a half, insane. Look at that, he wants to go. He wants to go. <laughs> yeah! That is dad's third 40 incher of the trip. He's now got a 39 and a half. This 40. is 40 and a half? Yeah, 40, 40 and a half, 42. Insane, insane. Yeah. And he's like never done any lake trout fishing, so he is ruined for lake trout fishing <laughs> forever. Spoiled. Uh, one more for his specialist. I think we're gonna finish it off this morning. And once again, I'll show you the tube, Dad. You wanna show the magic tube? There we go, it's the silver bullet. The little water wolf. And I think that blade on the back is pretty key as well, but it's just a good size, good five, six inch tube. We've been putting a little Cisco meat on top. And uh, yeah, dad hasn't been doing any aggressive jigging. He's kind of just been hanging his tube near the bottom at 100 feet of water. We've been marking the odd big fish coming through, but yeah. it seems like they're just cruising along the bottom and feeding in that bottom column, which isn't necessarily what trout always do. Trout are known for being all over the column, but the bottom is where we're focusing. And first half an hour of the morning, dad caught a 40 incher. So 40 and a half, insane. All right, guys, I'm tired of getting no fish by my dad. So I'm dropping some meat down. Not as exciting, but effective. We made it back to camp. This is where we're hanging out this week, Kamachawi Outpost. We're in the middle of nowhere. We got dropped off a float plane two days ago, three days ago. It is our third day here. We're here for four days of fishing. And uh, pretty good start to the day. Dad with another 40 inch trout. If you didn't see the last video, Dad put on an absolute clinic. This is pretty sweet. Bunch of boats here. Cabin is up there in the woods. We're gonna go cook some burgers and uh, plan our game plan for the afternoon. What do you think? First time at an outpost? Pretty nice. You do feel, uh, you know, as though you are really away from things without any internet, without any telephone, uh, just a satellite telephone for emergency purposes and a daily check-in. Um, yeah, you feel disconnected. Yeah, I mean, I'm guilty of it as well. I spend a lot of time on my phone. But yeah, four days with no emails. I do have my Garmin and reach along for sending messages just to let people know we're okay. The solitude of an outpost camp like this is amazing. It's such a cool option. The other part of this is this isn't that expensive of a trip. Like, uh, I'll link the website below. But you go with a couple buddies and it's affordable. It doesn't need to be a once in a lifetime bucket list trip. It can be something you do every year, something you save up for and do every two years. We're gonna eat some burgers. We're gonna get back out there. All right. We are heading back out. Oh, water all over the lens. It's raining again. The weather's been uh, not 100% beautiful, but we're back to pike, doing the afternoon of pike fishing. Dad still needs a Master Angler Northern Pike. That would kind of round up the trip nicely along with him getting a fifth Master Angler Lake Trout. Both things that I think are gonna happen. It's windy, it's rainy. We'll see you guys out there. Made it back to camp. Man, I can't believe day three is done already. Um, this afternoon, didn't have too much to show you guys. Um, this morning, started off with an absolute bang with dad slamming 40 inch drought, 40 and a half. We're going up to the cabin to have dinner and we will see you guys tomorrow for our final day at Kamachawi Lake Outpost. Welcome to the rain once again, every day. 
other than the first day, we have rain. All right, guys, this is what we've been tipping our lures with this week. You can use sucker belly, that's super common. Cisco belly is very good as well. Those are the kind of like the two main options. Sometimes I've heard they like one bait more than the other. Um, but yeah, we've had good success with Cisco and uh, it's just that little bit of smell when the fish comes in and, and is kind of tentative on it. Well, we'll, uh, we'll move real up. We'll try one more spot and then we could, we could chum the rest of the bait. Oh, oh fish. Man. I'm on to something. As he's reeling up, dad hooks up first trout of the morning. Not bad. It's a dark one. Well, we're not going to get skunked on our last day, guys. I think it's 27 inches. Oh, and he's gone. Trout number one. All right, guys. Since it's the last day, we're using the rest of our bait up. We're going to chum. And chumming is known as an ice fishing thing, I think, more so. But we're going to do it now in open water. I'm just going to set up by this waypoint. I'm going to start taking these handfuls of Cisco, and I'm going to start throwing them over. And uh, it'll take a while to sink, but hopefully it'll bring some fish in. All right, guys, we're trolling now, we're trying something different. We're not catching them jigging, so. All right, trolling sucked. So we're switching game plans one more time. The nice thing about a lake like this is you don't have to target trophy fish. When you're jigging in 100 feet of water with giant baits, you're targeting a big fish. If you move shallower with smaller baits, we went to smaller tubes now, and we're just gonna try to catch a bunch of fish to uh, to end our trip off. So yeah, we got an hour left to fish for you to call it a trip, and hopefully we're gonna end it with some lake trout action. A flurry of it. Marking a couple fish in 50 feet of water. This is the shallowest we fished. Did you have one? Yep. Dad's on, there we go, a little bit of action. Just as soon as it hit the bottom. I got excited, I haven't seen, ooh. First fish in a few hours. Yep, all right. It is a beautiful, dark little lake trout. They do get this small. That's a sign of a healthy lake. It's going right back. Number one, well, number two for the day. Number one on the action. Nice. You're on fire. Oh, ho. oh, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. nice. That might be it. Bring the head towards me. Lift, 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 lift. Wrong way. Oh, yeah. okay. I think we did it. I think we did it. <laughs> I think we did it. With an hour left to go, we decided to switch to action trout, which meant going shallow and downsizing our baits. And dad got a good one. We're gonna throw it on the tape. Oh, I almost lost it. It's gonna be close, Dad. I don't know. Give you guys a quick look. It's gonna be really close. All right, here we go on the tape. All right, what do we got at the tail? Holy oh, smoke! Thirty-eight. That fish is just skinny. Here, no, no, let me pinch. Thirty-eight. That's over thirty-eight. Yeah. Over thirty-eight incher. <laughs> All right, there it is, Dad's fifth trophy Laker at Kamachawi Outpost. How does it feel to be a specialist? Hey, this is, <laughs> was not expecting this. All right, going right back. Man, what a way to end the trip. That was a surprise. All right, what do you think? Uh, do we go home now or I what? guess we can, yeah. <laughs> Dad's a specialist. Yeah, all right. That fish uh, caught us by surprise. We fished in 55 feet of water with smaller baits. Maybe we should've been doing that when they stop biting at 100, but oh, so good. We have an hour left. So we're gonna do this a little bit more. And what a way to end the trip. I realized that I didn't talk any location on this trip. And that's a pretty important part. So I thought I'd, I'd add a little bit, give you guys a little info on what sort of structure we were fishing. So basically the spot that we Lake Trout fished the entire time we were there was a pinch point, a deep, deep pinch point. And pinch points are generally just a traffic spot for fish, but a deep pinch point is specific to Lake Trout. So when you're Laker fishing, 
spring, summer, fall, it's always good to have deep water access nearby. So that trough was 120, came up to 60 on the edges, and then back down to 120. That was a good pinch point. In the springtime when the fish are shallower, you might be fishing in 40 to 60, but it is still nice to have that 100 foot water nearby because deep water always holds big lake trout. Um, that's pretty much it. Back to the action. All right, we have about 45 minutes of fishing left. So this trip is not completely wrapped up, but I do want to tell you guys a couple items that I think are pretty handy to bring on a flying trip. A lot of these flying planes, you are restricted on a weight. So, I mean, you got to figure out what you can take and what you can't take. But I brought my big graph along. I brought a Helix 12 along, a little bit bigger than I need to maybe. But uh, I mean, when you're on an uncharted lake, it's super nice to have auto chart because it's creating a map and showing, you know, why the spot's good. It helped show this lake trout trough and find the specific spots on it. As well, a portable transducer bracket. I've used these for years, guiding. I'll, I'll link this one below. This is just the one I've always used. And when you're hopping boat to boat, it's an easy way to uh, just fasten your, fasten your transducer. Next piece of gear, and this thing I bring everything with me, I've talked about it before. This is a battery box, this is a Dakota Lithium. Uh, you can use this to power your graph, power your phone. It's just always nice to have this along. You never know what you might need it for. I use it for my GoPros as well. And lastly, and I think this is the most important piece of gear, this is a Garmin in Reach. This is basically a, a satellite sender receiver transponder i don't even know if that's the right word for it but basically it will send and receive messages via satellites you don't need any cell service it's also got an sos button on the side in case something really crazy happens you need to call for help um but this i bring with me everywhere I got a little floaty on it so i don't drop it in the water but this is that peace of mind that if something goes really wrong because we're 70 miles from anybody that we can get help and a first aid kit. I should have said that first. That one's pretty obvious, but always bring a first aid kit with you. I've seen hooks and hands and crazy things out in the bush, so be prepared. All right, I think we should probably go. Guys, that's a wrap. What a way to end with dad getting a monster. Uh, we'll check back in with you guys at the dock, but uh, pretty sweet morning to finish it off.